Hey, welcome to So Awkward, it's me, Don. I'm in my car because I'm about to go see the new Ron Howard nautical adventure film, In the Heart of the Sea. You're watching So Awkward! Freddy Krueger saying hi! I liked it. <laughs> I did. I really liked it. I'm a huge fan of nautical adventure movies. You have a book or a movie that takes place on the ocean in a boat, I'm there. You have people climbing riggings. You got your stuffy British people in uniform saying things like, Beat to quarters, Mr. Johnson. Love it. I've seen them all, read them all. It's my favorite thing. And just to be clear, I'm not a sailor. I get seasick. I get scared of shark attacks in swimming pools. And as nautical adventures go, this was really good. But there were a couple problems which kept it from being a great one, or at least one that I would recommend to people who aren't normally a fan of this genre. But however, if you love nautical adventures, go see it, because it's really cool. I would say the biggest problem with this film is just the pacing. It was two hours, which isn't that long, it, but it felt longer. Especially the way it was structured and paced was really weird. Because it's a movie about a whaling vessel that's attacked by a whale. Spoiler. <laughs> it's in the trailer. And then they're shipwrecked and they have to get home. But the whale attack happens like right in the middle of the movie when it should have happened earlier. Because all of the, the second half of the movie is way better than the first half. Like that's when it gets interesting. Some people might think that's when it gets even more slow paced and boring, but that's when I thought it, like the story took place. Oh, this is the story. It's not about a, the, a whaling adventure. It's about the, what happens to this crew after they're shipwrecked and how do they get home. So, and I, I would blame some of that on the marketing because this movie looks like it's going to be this big, rousing action adventure about a whale attack, and it's just not. If you've read the book, that isn't what you would expect, because this is pretty faithful to the, the story from the book, which is a true story about a whaling vessel called the Essex that's attacked by a whale and is the inspiration for Moby Dick. By that, both stories take place on a whaling vessel and have a whale no other similarities. The book um, wasn't really hyped up as being the inspiration for Moby Dick. I think there's like a blurb on the cover and the introduction. I think the author mentions how this story, among other stories, inspired Moby Dick. But this movie makes the case that Moby Dick is based on this story. Herman Melville is a character in it. There's a whole framing sequence where Herman Melville is interviewing the last living survivor of this incident years uh, hence. And they keep cutting back to him and they keep stressing how, how important this story is to the development of Moby Dick. And it's just not. That's just, that's just ridiculous. But I did all, like all the scenes with Brendan Gleeson was the narrator. Or the storyteller and the guy who plays Q in the new Bond films is Herman Melville. They're both really good. The scenes were really well done, well written, well directed, well acted, but they should not have been in this movie. <laughs> because they felt false and because they padded the running time uh, to such an extent that they just should have gotten rid of it and it didn't add anything. They kind of, they would have a scene like on the boat. Then they would cut back to Herman Melville talking to this guy when they would kind of punctuate, oh, just in case you didn't get it, audience, this is what that scene was about. Could have gotten rid of all of that. It added nothing. Also, after we're supposed to believe that Herman Melville just begged this guy to tell him his story because he needed to hear it so he could write Moby Dick because it's going to inspire this great work of American literature that's just in his soul that he's dying to get out, but he needs to hear this guy's story first. And then he writes Moby Dick... And what does Brendan Gleeson's character think after he read it? Is he reading this book and like, this guy even listened to my story? This has nothing to do with anything that happened on the Essex, other than that there's a whale involved. Spoiler warning, there's no cannibalism in Moby Dick. 
It'd be like if Mario Puzo interviewed like a pickpocket and said, tell me all about what it's like to be a pickpocket on the street. And then he went and wrote The Godfather. Also, while the acting was fine and some of it was great, it was a cast of English people and Irish people and Australians all playing 19th century fishermen from Nantucket. And they all, it was just one of those movies with just a mishmash of weird accents. No two people sounded alike. Which maybe for the time is kind of authentic, especially because it's a maritime story. So all these people come from all over the place uh, and go to sea. But you'd think there'd at least be some kind of consistency. Some of the accents were, you know, they would vary from scene to scene. Chris Hemsworth is a great actor. A very handsome, very imposing screen presence. But his accent was just all over the place. <laughs> there were scenes where he sounded like he was trying to be from Boston. There were scenes where he sounded like Thor. <laughs> but that's okay. I like the guy. I think he's really cool. He's a great actor. The best was Cillian Murphy, who in real life probably has the thickest accent because I believe he's Irish. But when he came on screen, I was like, okay, this guy is a sailor in 19th century Nantucket. I, this is what everybody should sound like because he was perfect. The movie, I don't know what the budget was or anything about the production, but there were scenes that felt cheap. <laughs> I wanted more sprawling vistas of the ocean, whereas it felt like most of this film was done on a set in front of a green screen, which was kind of disappointing. Like if you were to compare this to Master and Commander, which is the gold standard nautical adventure film, in my opinion, the Aubrey Maturin books are the gold standard for literature. Like, that film came out like 10 years ago and it looked 10 times better. Just the ship looked better, the sets looked better, the shots were better. This film just looked kind of cheapish. And you could really tell that there was a lot of CG used. Not all of it convincing. Also, I don't want to keep comparing this to other films, but like Master and Commander, it takes place on a similar ship with a similar crew. In Master and Commander, we met almost the entire crew. We learned who their characters were. We remembered people's names. They had different characteristics. Whereas in this movie, there's Chris Hemsworth, there's the captain, then there's the kid who grows up to be Brendan Gleeson. Everybody else is just a mishmash of dirty faces with weird accents. When they started to die, there's a lot of people dying in this movie. I didn't feel all that much. Like there's a scene where there's a you know a whale attack. Then there's a scene where there's this body that's like floating in the ocean. It's a beautiful, eerie, haunting image. But I didn't know who the character was. I was like, is that Cillian Murphy or is that is that Thor? Did Thor just die? I think the whale gets more screen time than some of the sailors. And the whale is on screen for maybe five minutes. Not a lot of whale in this movie. But what we do get of the whale is pretty great. I was gonna see this movie with Jester, and she said, I'm not gonna see that. I said, why not, it looks awesome. She's like, no it doesn't, it looks awful. <laughs> and I'm glad she didn't come because there were, she would not have liked all of the whale slaughtering scenes. They were very, they were very well done. And whaling was very barbaric and violent and bloody, and they captured it as they should have captured it, showing the true barbarism of it. And they even went into how they would, you know, start to cut up the blubber and boil it on the ship. And they had a scene, which I've never even heard of before, where they had a crew member go into the carcass of the whale, the whale's skull, just to get all of the blubber out. It was disgusting, but really cool. Is it gonna be a hit? No, because these movies are never hits. People don't like nautical adventures. I don't know. I don't think it'll be a hit. Also, the marketing is weird. Like They make it look like this big, sprawling action adventure, and it's not. It's a really slow-paced, thoughtful um, examination of humanity in the face of horrible tragedy and almost impossible obstacles or something or it's just a bunch of people on a boat but it's really well done i liked it a lot if you sat through this review 
which is probably almost as long as the movie itself, you might have the patience to bang it through this movie. I thought it was great. I really liked it. I'm glad I saw it. It's not quite up there with Master and Commander. It's not up there with Moby Dick. <laughs> but it's a it's a really good faithful adaptation of the of a great story. I say check it out. Or just go rent Charles. And it's Heart of the Sea, not Heart of the Ocean. I keep wanting to say Heart of the Ocean, but Heart of the Ocean is the diamond from Titanic. You know that the diamond that Rose's abusive fiance gave her, and then at the end of the movie, it's somehow used as a symbol of her love with Jack. Why? 